Hello, DGens. Welcome to Degenerate Takes XFL Week 3 Recap Overreactions. Degenerate Takes, all that bullshit. I'm the bro, Fix one AJ. Joining me as always, man with the number of sportsbook whisperer, college basketball guru, daddy of the diamond, all hail the king of the links, Mr. Noah Engelbretson. Noah, I just want to get it out of the way because I don't want us to bring it up again, okay? I just want to get it out of the way. This is the one time we're going to talk about it, and then I don't want to hear about it the rest of the show, all right? Okay. The Vegas field is the most disrespectful thing in football since Dan Snyder. I mean, since Deshaun Watson. I mean, it's just, it is like, if, if, I, I can't even put to words just how visually unpleasing and just elementary school it looks like. Bro, the goddamn lines weren't straight. The goddamn <laughs> lines weren't straight, brother. They're at least straight at the Pee Wee football games that I've seen out here. I mean, what the hell? What are we doing? Yeah, and the, sad, the saddest thing, too, is like at least if they had like a halfway decent team, it would be like, okay. But they're probably the worst team in the league. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, they, if, it's, if they're, the, they're better, you know, they're 500 or something, they're, doing, they're playing better, then, oh, it's, you know, grittiness. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. No, it's just bad football on a bad football field. It's awful. Yeah, and I say probably because Orlando looks pretty bad too. But, yeah, it's, I, I mean, they had the, the attendance numbers um, for this past weekend. Uh, DC, well over 16,000. Yeah. Vegas, barely over 6,000. It was like 6,000 and then a zero and then whatever the change was. Um, and then I want to say, I don't remember, but Houston and Arlington, one was at like 11,000, over 11,000, one was over 12,000. I think the average was like 11,008. Hey, and I um, mean, you throw the Vegas numbers out. That's pretty good attendance for the XFL starting off. Yeah, and I know like in D.C., like that stadium looked pretty full. Another great environment in D.C. I think the field capacity of Audi Field, I'm going to look it up right now just to see how full. Um, yeah, 20,000 capacity they had over 16,000 uh, fans in there. So, I mean, that's over 80% full. That's that's damn darn good. good, I would say. That's damn yeah, good. Yeah, for a league that's, you know, just getting going and just trying to gain some traction. Um, I want to say the Arlington Stadium is a beautiful stadium. I don't know if that's also a soccer stadium or, or where they're playing there. I think it's a soccer uh, stadium, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, that I mean that and Audi Field, both beautiful stadiums, and then you have this fucking shit stain of a stadium in Vegas, and I, I don't get why it's so much like different and so much worse. Uh, yeah, it, it's got awful. It's got awful. But hey, that's all we're going to say on that. That's all we're going to say on that. Before we get into the games, we do want to go ahead and shout out the um, amazing 241 subscribers we have now on YouTube. 22 we have on Rumble. We do appreciate uh, all of your support and everything. Uh, hey, let us know what other content you want to see. If you want to join the already all the DGens, please like, share, subscribe down below. But Noah, let's go ahead. Week three, another hell of a good week in the XFL. I'm really starting to enjoy it. I mean, minus you know the obvious things we've already talked about. The product's fine. It's good football. I've been enjoying myself. I even made my grandfather sit down and watch, and I've watched some, and he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. But uh, week three started us off on Saturday night, uh, Seattle Sea Dragons going to Vegas to play the Vipers. Uh, Seattle squeaks out of this one, 30 to 26. Danucci getting his first dub. I, I mean, this, like we said, I think the last time um, on our betting show, if you're going to start watching the XFL, this is not the game to do it. Um, Vegas, I mean,. I mean, yeah, Seattle came back and everything, but it was a shit game to start. Uh, not to mention the w the weather was god awful. The wind was miserable. You couldn't get a ball downfield. Couldn't kick. Yeah, for for a second week in a row, terrible weather in Vegas. Yeah, you had the pouring rainstorm, like torrential downpour the week before, and then this. Not to mention they're playing on a garbage ass. That, you know, that we was talked about we it. We were <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't think either of these teams are very good. 
Seattle needing a late fourth quarter touchdown drive, a heave to Josh Gordon, probably the most talented player in the league. Not probably. I mean, objectively, he's talent-wise the best player in the league. I don't know that you know you could argue other other people are better in certain attributes but yeah Josh Gordon just looking like a man among boys on that last yeah. heave downfield on that touchdown drive to to seal them the win um but yeah i mean we've covered this Vegas team not good at all and Seattle needing a late touchdown drive with some help to and I mean, to, to win it. and I'll take the late touchdown drive shout out for the cover, but it's, it's getting to the point. I mean, I tried to watch that game and be like, all right, what are some positive talking points I can come up with for the show on Monday? I mean, they can score sometimes. Good job. They have, they have Josh Gordon. Yeah, they have Josh Gordon. <laughs> that's, that's the positive. Uh, yeah, it's rough over there. I mean, that was probably, unless I see a bad line again, the one of the few times I want to put my money on Danucci and have the ball in his hands deciding my fate there. Um, but hey. Yeah, here's the funny thing, AJ. I don't think Danucci's very good. And I, I, I said this at the beginning of the season before week one. I said people are going to way overestimate them and the lines are going to be screwed up with Seattle because people hear Ben Danucci and they're like, oh, well, he started for the Cowboys He's for like half good. a season. That don't mean shit. That don't mean shit. Believe it or not, I, Jerry I, Jones has been wrong before, and he'll be wrong again. I think he's in the bottom half of starting quarterbacks in this league. I mean, there's only eight teams, but I do think there are at least four starting quarterbacks better than Danucci. I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And let's go ahead and talk about two of them. Moving on to the next game, Noah. We got the Battle Hawks going to the Defenders. I mean, defenders, 34-28, they take care of business at home. The beer snake lives. The second beer snake looked like it was living. And damn it, Noah, we still got lemons thrown on the field. That is why, at this time, I would like to announce my allegiance in the XFL to not only the beer snake, to not only the lemons. Give me the defenders, baby. Let's go. Let's go. AJ. AJ, I'm so glad you found the light. I'm so glad you found the light here. Um, it's it's not even like, you, you know, I look and like the team's really good. It's fun to cheer for the team, but you just watch this fan base on TV, two home games now. This is the rowdiest, most fun oh, yeah. fan base. I would argue that the DC Defenders fan base is better than half of the fan bases in the NFL, just I'm on a small sample size, but they just, they're into it. They're they're having fun. It doesn't matter. Oh my God. I'm I'm so glad you're joining the DC Defenders fan base, baby. It's hard not to. It's not it's so hard not to. You just mentioned it. The atmosphere alone. I mean, how do I see a beer snake? They get exactly what they want, and they still want to throw lemons on the field because why fuck you? That's why. Here's some goddamn lemons. We're gonna make the game stop for five minutes. Cause we're not done drinking yet, and this game's going a little too fast for us. So we'll make our own delay a game. And they weren't even serving lemons in the drinks anymore this week. It just, that just goes to show some of these fans snuck lemons in just to throw them on the field. Uh, so are the lemons the Defenders dildos? Bildos? It's a completely different thing. Apples and oranges. <laughs> lemons and oranges. Lemons and oranges. Lemons and dildos, apparently. But, um, I mean, Noah, what can we say about this DC Defenders team that we haven't already? I mean, shout out to the Battle Hawks. They held their ground. They looked really good this week um, going up against, I would argue, the number one team in the league. Not just because I'm a fan, just because I'm watching football. Um, Te'amu, fucking stud. Fucking mm -hmm. stud. I mean, what that guy can do, he looks Sunday football ready. You know what I mean? Like, he looks like he's ready for that next level. Yeah, and I remember watching him back in 2020 in the XFL when he was on the St. Louis Battlehawks. And he looked very good. He was probably the second best looking quarterback back in 2020. PJ Walker obviously was just putting up monster numbers. <laughs> he was dumb. And got an NFL contract out of that. Tama didn't quite get there, but uh, he plays he plays a good enough season. I don't know. The hard part, though, is playing split snaps with De'Ara King. Obviously, the 
the defenders love using Derek King in running packages. Um, he's getting a good seven to 10 carries a game at quarterback. So, you know, King comes in and he's kind of the goal line guy. So Tamu is not going to put up a ton of touchdowns is my guess, because they kind of make a little quarterback switch in the red zone or on like short down and distances, which is funny. Cause like Tamu is a bigger guy and is still very mobile, but yeah, Derek King's kind of shifty. He's, he gets, gets in those gaps quick and he's a slimy little fuck sometimes, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't use the word slimy, oh, but fine. greasy. No, I just slippery, shifty, shifty fine, shifty. fine. We'll give it to Quick. your word. All right. Um. Yeah, but this game, um, honestly, final score is closer than the game actually was. You know, St. Louis getting a garbage time touchdown after after DC fumbling, get, getting getting the big defensive stop backed up on their own one yard line and then fumbling the snap and letting them get a extra touchdown in there at the end. But you know, should it should have been a double digit blowout. It's all good. I can't wait to kick the shit out of Vegas next week. Oh, it's going to be bad next week. It's going to be bad for Vegas next week. Uh, moving on to the afternoon game. Noah, we got the Orlando guardians. They were at the renegades and oh god talk about a snooze fest bro 9 to 10 arlington squeaks out a victory shout out to them um i think this game was more the renegades are worse than we thought than it is orlando being good i think these were two equally matched teams and the renegades played down to where the guardians are at I, I, it was just such unimpressive football from both sides. Sure, we can say it was a defensive battle, but I wouldn't say the defenses look particularly good. Granted, it's the XFL, but even taking that into account, I wouldn't say the Guardians just put up a huge defensive wall for the game. Yeah, I, I'm not very impressed by Arlington, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, they should have won this game by more. Uh, Eight-point favorites. AJ, I'm just realizing now, looking back, that I went four and zero against the spread this week, but zero and four on the over unders. I went three and one against the spread. Same thing on the totals. <laughs> so pretty impressive there. But yeah, I, I don't think I don't think Orlando's very good, and I, I'm not sold. I'm not sold on the Renegades. I don't think they're until they show me something. Like they're. To me, a very weak two and one right now, especially now that we're getting more of a picture, you know? Yeah. Like they need a comeback win to beat Vegas, who we've established is not good at all. Um, they you know, they lose 22 13. Or nope, I'm looking at the wrong week. Uh they lose 23 14 to the Roughnecks in Houston. That's not like a terrible loss, right? But if you're going to be competitive in this league, you yeah. should probably play a better game than that. And then a 10-9 win over the Guardians. So they've they've squeaked out two narrow wins on what we believe to be the two worst teams in the league. Yeah, you can't be having that. And then you lose by nine against what I think we can both agree are probably the two best teams in the league, the two undefeated teams, the two teams that are easily handling their business or so appear to be Houston and DC. So like, I, it feels like to put it in NFL terms, this feels like a, like a six to seven win team. That's just, you know, they've, they've played the, they've played the bears and the Texans in two of their first three games. So <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. And I think next week's game will be, really telling of who the Renegades are when they go to St. Louis and play the Battle Hawks. I think they're going to be... Uh, who seems to be... St. Louis seems to be a decently strong team. Uh, I, I think we've very quickly in three weeks established three different tiers in the XFL. Yeah. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like DC and Houston are easily the two best teams. Yes. And then there's a drop-off in which you've got St. Louis... San Antonio and I and San Antonio. And then I would maybe, I don't know if I'm group, I, I guess I'm grouping Arlington in there with them and, 
and maybe Seattle, or maybe we got four tiers, you know, St. Louis and San Antonio, <laughs> and then you got Arlington, Seattle. I'm probably way over analyzing this for only yeah, three weeks of play. Seriously. <laughs> But DC and Houston definitely look the be- the best, and then Orlando and Vegas look bad, and then you got the other four teams. Which there, there's question marks about all four of those teams. Yeah, but um, DC, Houston, they are easily the two best teams, and that takes us soon to our last game. Noah, Sunday night football, uh, San Antonio Brahmas go into Houston. They lose to the Roughnecks, twenty-two to thirteen. Kind of what we both saw going into this game. Houston just handling business how they're going to um as we just talked about houston's one of the best teams in the league with the defenders right there can't wait for their week six six matchup on monday night football you gotta love that um i'm 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 not out on san antonio yet i'm not out on them i i think out of the teams that lost this weekend they were the ones they were yeah they were the team i think that showed the most fight and the most promise uh i Say what you want about St. Louis. I'd put St. Louis in the same tier with San Antonio, but hey, you know it is like the NBA though. You know the first, the top half of the well, actually, it's the uh, NBA more than the top half now make it into the playoffs. <laughs> but it's like the NHL. You know the top half of the t- teams make the playoffs. So you just got to finish top four in this league to have a chance in the playoffs. So. Um, I, th- I think San Antonio could be, could be a little sleeper pick there for, for finishing, you know, I, I feel like they could finish second in that, um, cause what are, what are our divisions here? We've got Houston, Arlington, San Antonio, Orlando in one, and then yes. Seattle, Vegas, St. Louis, DC in the other. Yes. Okay. I mean... Yeah, I could, I could see San Antonio beating out Arlington for that that playoff spot there, finishing second to Houston. Oh, easy. they lost by the same amount of points as Arlington, but to me, they they looked better doing I, it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm I, with you. I, I I test. I'm going by eye test completely, not stats. They look a little better on the eye test. They look a lot better on the eye test. Uh, I mean, Noah, great week of football. Excited for week four. You got anything else to say about the XFL week three recap? No, I just still think it's funny that I went four and oh ATS, but then oh and four on the over unders. <laughs> hey, you'll have days like those, but don't worry. Next week we're both gonna go undefeated. That's why you gotta make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the show. Uh make sure you know when we're gonna be dropping our content. We got the XFL coming out this week. Uh we might do some more golf this week, kind of on the fence about that. We'll see what the field looks like. And yeah. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for listening and watching. I've been the bro for 20AJ. That's the money train Noah. We'll see you next time on Degenerate Takes.